Okay, so continuing in on our adjustment process, learning objective three uh, teaches you about the uh, adjusting entries that we call uh, accruals, accruals, okay. And uh, so again, these are revenues that we need to have in our record for a period of time, that, that month or that year, although we won't receive it till the next period of time. Uh, that's an accrued revenue. Accrued expenses are expenses that occur during the month, but we're not going to be paying them until the next period, next month. So those are accrued expenses. Your book uh, really focuses on three. Uh, there are many different adjusting entries, but uh, we're fortunate enough that they limit it. <laughs> <laughs> to, uh, I guess, the, the essential seven here, um, four uh, deferrals and three accruals. So let's do our accruals today. Okay, so again, the accrual piece is about revenues that need to be um, recorded for this period, whether it's this month or this particular year, although it's not gonna be collected received until later. And these are about expenses that have happened in the current accounting period, in the current month or the current year, but will not be paid until the following month or the following year, okay? So that's what we're talking about here. Um, accrued revenues are, are common because you might have earned money in a particular period, but you're not going to be receiving it until later. Uh, this is what an accounts receivable is. Right? Accounts receivables are basically, all right, you're going to record that you had revenue, uh, or that you actually earned the revenue, but you haven't collected the cash yet, so you're waiting to receive the cash. So it's a relatively simple um, concept here. There are a lot of accrued uh, revenue uh, situations. Uh, landlords could actually earn rent for a period of time without collecting it yet in cash. Uh, they would have to record that rent as revenue for the month, even though they are, have not collected the cash for it. Uh, banks do that too with interest, uh, for example. Uh, interest is one of the is one of the bank's largest revenue streams. Interest on loans, and so they would uh, say that they would they earned interest, although they haven't collected it yet. For example, and uh, another example here is what we saw in Sierra Corporation, where they performed the services, uh, but they did not get payment. So um, when you perform services on account, you record the revenue and you're waiting to receive, right? You set up a receivable, you're waiting to receive that cash in the future. So there's the, these are common um, accrued revenues. Uh, this book focuses on the very last one. Okay. So the adjusting entry for accrued revenue, revenue shows that a receivable needs to be set up to show that you're gonna be receiving that. But the revenue is earned in that period. Sounds like a broken record, because it is. So we're gonna be debiting the accounts receivable account in almost all these cases and crediting the service revenue account, okay? Uh, so we debit the asset account showing we have accounts receivable, credit the revenue account showing we have revenue in that period of time. How does it work? Well, here's the illustration in your book. Uh, if you have your book open, this is page 164 at the very top. What we have here is uh, in October, Sierra Corporation performed guided services for $200. So they performed it, meaning they've done the work. So it's, it's this $200 is revenue for them. But they did not bill the clients before the end of the month. Well, that revenue was earned on October 31st. And so according to the revenue recognition principle, we have to recognize this $200 revenue on October 31st, although we're not gonna be collecting it until in this case, November. And so we do an adjusting entry showing that 
we have an accounts receivable for $200 um, and service revenue for $200. And that basically uh, puts the revenue in the proper period. In this case, October 31st is when the revenue is earned, but yet shows we're gonna collect that or receive that cash at a future date. Uh, once that is recorded in the journal, you know what happens, it posts to the ledger and look what happens in the ledger. There are adjustments in the receivables account. So now accounts receivable has a new balance. It didn't have a balance prior to this, but after this adjustment, it has a balance. And $200 more for service revenue, which increases the amount of revenue in that period of time in October. Imagine if we didn't do the adjustments, we would be missing out on $600 of revenue, uh, which means less profit. So, you know, the adjustments are very important uh, to do. Okay, so again, uh, the entry that we learned uh, specifically, we're debiting the accounts receivable and crediting revenue. What if we didn't do that? Well, if we didn't do that, we would not have any accounts receivable. And so our assets would look smaller than they really are. And of course we wouldn't have that revenue on the books either. So our revenue would look smaller than it is, which also means the profit would be smaller than it was. So it caused all types of problems if we don't do this adjustment. Okay. Now we're on to accrued expenses and there's only two of these that the book focuses on. Uh, so that's good news. There are actually a lot of different accrued expenses that happened. Um, you know, interest uh, that basically built up on a loan, but you're not gonna pay that interest until later. Um, taxes that you have, um, you know, collected need to get paid. Okay. Uh, utility bills that have happened um, in a certain month. So electric was used in October. You got a bill for October, but you're not paying it till November. That's another accrued expense. And uh, and salaries is, is, is always important. Your book focuses on these two, which is why I circled them, okay? So we're gonna like take a look at interest on loans that have happened, but have not yet been paid. Um, and the second thing we're going to look at is <clears throat> people work in a certain month, um, but their pay period is not until the next month. So that is another thing. So these are the two that we're going to be focused on here. Again, uh, when we do an accrued expense, we want to recognize the expense, but because we haven't paid it yet, we have to set up a liability. We have to set up a payable account showing that we have that obligation. Now that we have recorded it, as an expense, we have the obligation to pay it. Okay. So accrued expenses work the same way. We're going to be debiting this specific expense account, and we'll be crediting a specific payable account, which is a liability. So again, debiting the expense, crediting the liability account is how accrued expenses work. And here's our first example of two. Um, it's very common for companies to have notes payable. And so Sierra Corporation, if you remember in October, on October the 1st, they borrowed $5,000 in a notes payable. So how notes payable work, in this case, it's a three month note, is the company gets the loan up front, but notes payable are paid back with interest on the date that it's due. So if they had this loan on October the 1st, and it's a three month loan, they're not gonna pay the note or the interest on that note back until January 1st, which is three months later, okay? That's how notes payable work, okay? So just because they're not paying it until January, doesn't mean that this note's not accruing interest in October or November or December. And because it is accruing interest in October and November and December, we actually have an interest expense for each of those months that we're gonna to have to record as time goes by. At least here, we know we're at the end of October. So we're only worried about what interest happened in the month of October, now that we're on October 31st. Well, one full month's interest has happened. 
this three month note of $5,000 was given at an annual in interest rate of 12%. Now the word annual here means that this 12% is for the whole year. We only care about one month of that year. Okay, so we take the $5,000 loan, we multiply it by the 12%, which is the annual, the annual interest rate. And then we simply multiply it by one month over 12 months. So that's where the 112th comes in. And that gives us $50 of interest is part of October's expenses. This note created $50 of interest for October. And if you're a business, you can expense all interest on loans. Businesses can expense all interest on loans. So again, they'd have to expense it in the period that it happened. Right? So <clears throat> this $50 is gonna be expensed for October, but of course they're not gonna pay it until January 1st. So they'll set up a payable. So this is how it works. At the end of October, they're gonna recognize the interest expense of $50 because that interest occurred in October. Of course, they don't have to pay it until January, so they're gonna set up an interest payable account. That's a liability account. Interest payable showing that they owe this for interest, okay, on this loan. Once they do that, of course, they're gonna update. As soon as you put anything in the journal, you know what happens, right? Posts to the ledger. So now what happens? The ledger has two new accounts that show up. Interest expense now has a balance. Interest payable now, is ha now has a balance. Those accounts didn't show up prior to the adjustments, but now that we actually had to adjust them, now the accounts are part of our, our ledger and our balance, our uh, trial balance. Okay, so this is important to know. It's important to know. So again, notes are, are it doesn't matter whether it's three months or six months or whatnot, you don't pay the loan back until it's due. You also pay all the interest on the same day. Okay, but for every month that you have that loan, there's interest that's accruing and the business has a right to expense the interest in the period that it happened and they set up a payable. So that's what's happening here. The next thing makes perfect sense because all businesses, I mean, I don't know about you, but I have to work first before I get paid. And even though they're going to pay you, they often pay you the week after you worked, right, at least. And so there's a delay. You've already worked, then you wait to get paid for when you worked, right? So that's how businesses work. So what happens then, and if you look at this company, Sarah Corporation has, uh, they pay salaries every two weeks. So as you see in October, the very last payday is Friday, October 26th. And that payday covers these two weeks of work, okay? It's covered in that payday. But as you see, there are three more work days. They only work Monday to Friday. Ooh, lucky them, huh? Um, they only work Monday to Friday. So you have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday are all in October but the next payday isn't until November the 9th. Well, these three days of work happen in October. They need to be expensed in October, although you're not gonna pay them until the next payday, which is in November. So in this case, they have a $2,000 weekly salary, uh, which means it's 400 bucks a day. So these three days, are 1200 bucks. So this $1,200 of salaries and wages needs to be expensed in October, although it's not gonna be paid until November. I have a question. Yeah. Um, it's, I worked for this place, very busy place, and they did this wrong. And eventually the government came in so those three extra days, they paid on the 15th and the 30th. So those three extra days just disappeared and they would tack it on somewhere else. So people who had worked there for quite some time, I left and was able to, I kept 
being paid for three months of those added days. So when the government shut them down, there were employees that were owed as much as a year. So a married couple that had done almost $600,000 worth of work that they deserved commission on, they didn't get. So what were they doing? Like how, how I see how the books work, but I'm like, how, where were they putting these days? How's that? Or is that, I mean, why the government stepped in? <laughs> Well, I don't think the government would step in unless um, the payroll taxes that were ex being expected. Because part of the payroll, I mean, government doesn't overview what you get paid. Uh, but what they, have, taxes. what they have a very big interest in is, of course, payroll taxes, which are required by law. Um, and so if they're not getting, and businesses collect a lot of taxes, of course they collect social security and Medicare taxes, their FICA taxes are collected and sent to the IRS. They collect uh, from your paychecks, uh, federal withholding. They collect state withholding on income tax. They collect sales taxes that have to be remitted. Um, they also need to pay into the uh, unemployment compensation system, things on that line. So the government has, uh, an interest in making sure they're collecting and all those things you have to have an, uh, you have to have a tax identification number before you can start uh, uh, opening a business if, if it's a taxable service or product. So uh, so they know when they're expecting things and when they're not and so they that's probably what they're what happened. But in this case <clears throat> all we're all we're looking at here and I don't know, how to explain <clears throat> how they did that. Um, all we're looking at here is the entry for these three particular days of work in October need to be expensed in October, um, although they're not gonna get paid until November. So um, when you look at how this is handled, on the next slide here, at the end of the month, you will see that the expense, look, October 31st is the date in the journal. They would expense that $1,200 in October because it happened in October. And then look what they do. They set up a payable to show they're going to pay that in the next period, which of course their next paycheck period is November the 9th. So this has to be recorded at the end of the month in, in corporate world. I'm not sure about uh, folks that use the cash basis. So again, uh, I don't know what basis of accounting that other business used either, um, but it might have been a cash basis and it, and it might have been just done differently. I don't know. So, um, so that's important. And then, of course, anything you put into the journal is going to get posted into the ledger. And then you see here, there was already some salaries and wages expense from the October 26th thing at, at Sierra. This is all about Sierra, right? And so when they added this additional $1,200, look, their salaries and wages expense for October should be $5,200, not $4,000. If they didn't do this adjustment, they would have understated that expense. Right? And then, of course, they set up a payable. So now they have another liability on the books showing that. So those are, you know, what, what happens if they don't do this types of thing, if they don't uh, debit that expense account and credit the payable. Uh, well, what happens is your expenses are look lower than they are, which means your profit looks bigger than it really is. And uh, here it says your lab abilities, but you know it's liabilities. Uh, you know they forgot to they forgot to add the I here. Your liabilities would look smaller um, than they really are. In other words, you'd be hiding. In some ways, you'd be hiding the amount of obligations you have from your owners. So uh, that's never a good thing. That's never a good thing. And so here is a summary of everything that we have learned for these are the um, these are the deferrals, and there were four of them, right? Three prepaid expenses, supplies, uh, prepaid insurance and equipment, uh, one unearned revenue which is unearned revenue. Um, and then you just learned three of the accruals, one accrued revenue, 
uh, transaction and two accrued expenses, one for interest and one for salaries and wages. These are the seven that you have to know for this particular chapter. The do it exercise at the end of learning objective three <clears throat> is on page 170. So if you look at page 170, okay, uh, you'll see this do it exercise. And here we have another company that started operations on October, uh, August the 1st. So right at the beginning of August is when they started. Now they're at the end of August. So August 31st ends. They want to make sure they're doing their adjusting entries for the following thing. At the end of August, the company owed its employees $800 in salary. So we know that's an accrued expense. Uh, August 1st, they took a loan out uh, for, th for 15 years. We don't care how long the loan is taken out for. All we care about is what's the interest for August because that we can expense, okay? And the third thing is they actually performed revenue, but they didn't record it. They need to record that in August and show they're gonna collect it later. So what are the, prepare, what are the adjusting entries that you need to prepare for the end of August? Um, well, the first thing you do here is to recognize that they owe their employees. So again, you would have uh, what I don't like about some of these slides here um, is you have to have the date <clears throat> here as well. Salaries and wages expense for 800, <clears throat> salaries and wages payable credit for 800. So this would be the adjusting entry for uh, accrued, this accrued expense, okay for salaries and wages. The second one here is we have, uh, we need to figure out what is the interest for uh, August, in this case, August. Uh, they borrowed $30,000, so that's gonna be our start. Again, we don't care how long this was. Uh, this loan is for, in this case, because they're gonna pay the interest maybe next month, maybe next year, who knows. But we do need to know that the annual interest, again, the word annual, this 10% is for the full year. And all we care about is what's the expense for the month of August. So $30,000 times 10% times one over 12 will give you the, uh, the proper uh, amount of interest. Again, they need to put the date here, 831. Um, so at the end of uh, August, they had $250 of interest on this loan that they can expense for that month, but they're going to show that they're going to pay it perhaps next month or whatnot. In a mortgage, they probably would be making some type of monthly payment. And in the third situation, we have, uh, we understand that on, on August 31st, they performed services. And so in this case, um, they, uh, they did work in August, but it was not recorded. So they actually have to record uh, this at the end of August. And it's $1,100, which is a pretty good chunk of revenue. You don't want to miss that. So what you would have in uh, the adjusting entries on 831, in this case, is you would debit accounts receivable here, showing you'll collect it later. But again, it's important to make sure that we have that revenue recognized in August when it was earned. Okay. So these are the remaining adjustments that... Um, uh, that are left that thankfully there's only three of the accruals um, there's there's you know there's four deferrals three accruals so seven so what I'm going to be doing is opening up homework for you for learning objective three so you can practice the accruals and then I'm going to give you a number of different well another homework assignment that incorporates all the adjustments so you can get used to them and again just to reiterate, and I don't like to be a broken record, but I am, um, it's not dementia, it's just I repeat things on purpose. Ah, okay, so it's, it's, it's not anything terrible. 
Um, but we are doing this adjustment process for a reason, right? And the reason is we wanna make sure all the revenue is accounted for in a period of time and all the expenses are accounted for in that period of time because the income statement is the very first financial statement we prepare. So in essence, it's one of the most important financial statements that are there because it shows, it's the only statement that shows whether you had a profit or a loss, right? So for owners, that's exceptionally important. And so you'd never want to deceive them by not including revenue that should be there or missing expenses that should be there. Right. So again, this adjustment process is just a double checking process because we want to make sure all of that is. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah uh, the journal is supposed to be real time. Uh, you know, it's supposed to be uh, accurately reflecting what's happening. When you do an adjustment, what you're really doing is updating the record for that particular month. Um, so in this case, the month has already gone by and we need to record, you know, those, those, uh, salary and wages for that month. Um, that month has gone by and we have to make sure, you know, we recorded the interest we have, we've double checked our supplies to make sure we have an ex we need to expense any and so forth. So all of these seven steps that we've taken is just to make sure by the month end, um, everything that happened in that month is reflected in the record. And that's why you saw um, the general ledger accounts change with those adjustments, okay? And what you're gonna learn in the next group, uh, the next thing that we're looking at uh, in chapter four is now that you've done all those adjustments in the journal, what does the ledger look like now, right? And uh, is it balanced? So we're gonna be looking at that uh, next class. Questions? <laughs>